Welcome everyone. We're so happy to have you with us here today. You have come to the Garden Club of Jacksonville's flower show series on contemporary designs featuring Laura Haley. And we're so happy to have you all here with us today. My name is Denise Reagan. I'm the executive director of the Garden Club of Jacksonville, and I'm here with Daniel Stark, who's our administrative assistant, who is handling a lot of our audio and video duties today. And we're so pleased to have him with us. We could not do programs like this without the uh, great support of the Jesse Ball DuPont Funds, um, a grant that uh, is allowing us to do programs just like this one. And we're so grateful. We're also here through uh, the, a great partnership with the Georgetown Garden Club out of Washington, DC. And we're so happy to have all of the members of the Georgetown Garden Club who are joining us here on Zoom today. And partnerships like this wouldn't be possible without the pandemic. So it's one of the few bright sides of <laughs> the situation we find ourselves in. I'd like to introduce our speaker for the day. Nationally recognized floral design judge, exhibitor, lecturer and educator, Laura Haley has made it her mission to educate others on the art of floral design. Haley is a member of Jacksonville's Late, Bloomer, Late Bloomers Garden Club and the Little Garden Club of Rye in Westchester County, New York. She has instructed fellow judges on various design styles and mentored intrepid designers around the country. Haley is a 2019 National Garden Club of America medalist for outstanding achievement in the field of floral design education. She has made floral design education her passion and countless club members across the country have benefited from her work. She is a multiple blue ribbon winner in Philadelphia, Newport and Garden Club of America flower shows around the country. And we are so lucky to have her as a member of the Garden Club of Jacksonville. And she's also the governance chair this year of the Garden Club of Jacksonville. And she's done amazing work in that area as well. All right, so if you have questions for Laura, please post them in the chat box on Zoom so that we can pose them to Laura either uh, when she's you know, not uh, busy doing her work um, or toward the end of the program. And so now I'm going to take you to Laura. So let me stop sharing my screen so that we can bring on Laura. Hi, Laura. Hi, good morning. I'm sorry that we're not uh, meeting in person as we had planned over a year ago when Corbin asked me to speak to Garden Club of Georgetown. But I'd like to thank Denise and Daniel because without them, I couldn't do this and they're great helpers. Thank you to the Garden Club of Jacksonville, Jesse Ball DuPont Fund for giving us the grant for this equipment. And thank you, Georgetown, for inviting me. It's kept me busy the last few months uh, planning what I was going to do and ordering plant material. It's been a little bit of a struggle with the pandemic, hard to find things these days. And the uh, storm in February caused a lot of problems for FedEx. And many of us who had ordered materials uh, received them uh, dried two weeks later. So fortunately, I reordered and we have plenty of stuff to work with today. I'm going, when Corbin asked me to speak to you, she talked about possibly contemporary designs for flower shows, being that that seems to be a stumbling block for many people. So I'm going to take you through some contemporary designs that I have done for shows over the past years, many years, and give you an idea of why I went in the direction that I did and um, how I did it. I have decided to start with something um, that's going to be a little bit of a modern mass, take it a little bit out of the, the exact uh, definition of modern mass, but it's the starting point. Um, many years ago, after I had become serious about floral design, my husband thought it was a great idea to buy me for Mother's Day this beautiful marble container that weighs a ton. I never knew what I was going to use it for. And so, lo and behold, I was entering a show and needed to interpret a dress. And Denise is going to show you the dress. So you can see that this container was a perfect complement to that dress. So I decided to use 
um, some wood to give myself a line. And I'm, you can see here that it's a very soft piece of driftwood that I just really hammered in some skewers and added some glue to hold it in place. So I'm going to turn it around and I'm going to start uh, and I'm on a turntable here, so I'll, I'll keep coming back to you so you can see what I'm doing. But um, the colors in the dress you can see are, you know, some earth tones, some black, some brown, some yellow. And so my idea was just to do a design that was beautiful that complemented the color scheme of the dress. And you know, not to try to recreate the dress out of plant material. That's something as um, beginners in flower shows, we tend to get a little bit um, crazy about when we have to interpret something. I know the first time I had to interpret a piece of art, I was, well, here's the leaves and here's the branches. But in truth, you just want to find a line or a, a color or a texture To give you something to look at. So these are tea leaves. And what I've done is I've rolled them like this and I've stapled them. And I've positioned them so that we don't have holes sticking out at the judges or the visitors. And the staple is visible, but when I put it in the design, I, I definitely make an effort to place it so that the staple doesn't show. If for some reason it was going to show, I would take the time to glue it. So like a modern mass where you use color blocking, I've blocked all my leaves of um, the dark burgundy in one side. What and kind of scissors do you use? What kind of scissors? Today I'm using Joyce Chen. I like them a lot. I also use these bypass shears. If you were here, I would tell you to keep an eye on them because I generally lose them um, as I'm going through the design. So let me just roll around again. What I'd like to do, since I have a little bit of a curve going off to that side is to put some uh, cordyline in to give myself some height. People often ask me, oh, how tall do you go? Do you measure? You know, we all learned from our mothers that, you know, one and a half times the height of the container. I use my eye. I don't tend to um, measure. I use my eye. And so in this case, we're going up and we're going down. So we're really, you know, concealing the container. I'm going to put some yellow callas in. And one of the tricks that I use with callas is I use a pipe cleaner and I stick it in the end and it helps wick up the water, whereas the, st the calla stem may be a little soft or it might um, be thick. These are not thick um, because I couldn't get callas from the wholesaler. And I went to the grocery store and bought some calla plants. And I think that's my new favorite trick because they cost a lot less in the grocery store on a plant and then they do at the wholesaler. So I, when by putting the pipe cleaner in, it allows you to insert the pipe cleaner here. And then when you put it in, you can bend your calla uh, any way you want. If, you, if for some reason you don't want it to um, you know, go straight up or you want it to come down. So I'm, I'm grouping my callus in a, you know, to get the yellow. That's a great trick. Um, someone asks, uh, how do you condition the plant material ahead of time? So conditioning, even if you cut it from your garden is really important. Um, most plant material, you trim any leaves that are gonna go underwater and you 
um, give it a fresh cut with clean scissors. And, and this is something you asked me about the um, what, what shears I use. Don't use what you use in the garden um, because you bring disease, you have, um, you may have some, you know, fungus in, on your plants in the garden. Be sure to have dedicated floral shears. So in terms of conditioning, it depends on the plant material. Something like anthurium comes with no foliage. So I don't, um, I, you know, and I often order it directly from Hawaii, uh, which is why FedEx is a big deal. <laughs> And if FedEx isn't working, we have a problem. This time, um, they were so worried about the problems that they'd had with FedEx that they uh, tried UPS, and it it worked like a charm. But um, beautiful, beautiful um, anthurium. I put them. I kept them in the box for a few days, and then I put them in. Um, uh, you know, a, a clean container of water. Before I, I start with fresh plant material, I make sure my containers are cleaned with Clorox so that there's no bacteria in them. I'm using only my floral shears. And um, going from there. Now, um, make sure, for instance, if you buy roses, make sure that you you know, strip off the any leaves that are going to go underwater. When I'm using roses, I strip off everything but the top two uh, leaves, and I um, and I clip the thorns and um, give it a fresh cut. And there's all this discussion about do you cut it underwater? And I don't. I've never noticed a difference, so I just cut them and get them right in the water. Okay, so you can see how I'm building my blocks. The yellow, the yellow isn't exactly, but I'm trying to create a line. I've got artichokes over here, and I've masked my uh, brown, beautiful brown anthurium. So when I did this design, and you, you'll see in the picture that it's not the same, but um, as my husband always says to me, you had it right the last time. Why do you always change it? And so my response to him was, do you make the same swing every time you, you know, are playing golf at the, and you're driving a ball and he shut up? Because it's impossible really to make the same uh, design. You can do something similar, but it's hard to make it exactly the same because the plant material is different. And, um, it, it's a living, breathing thing, and you um, you have to just see what see how it works for you on a given day. People often ask me um, what my favorite flowers are, and I would say most of the time it's Gloriosa lilies, and these come from Japan. I when I moved to Florida and was creating my uh, re-landscaping my property, I um, planted all the things I wanted to grow, I wanted to flower arranged with. So you're, you're looking at me and you're saying, what is this? And I'm going to come back to conditioning. <laughs> these are dried calathea leaves. I have these in my garden. You'll see me use these a lot today. If you were here, in person, I would pass it around and show it to you. It just has great texture. These are better used dried than they are fresh because they dry out um, pretty quickly in a design. You, you probably know them as a house plant. I think sometimes we call them prayer plant. And um, so if you get those to use in a design, make sure you keep them uh, you know, in water the whole time. So um, just to speed us along so we can do all of these designs, I'm going to fill in the back with Galix leaves. And one of my little tricks about Galix, so Galix, when you buy Galix, you know, $2 for a bunch of, of 20, you can keep them in their little bag and put them in the vegetable crisper in your refrigerator. <laughs> That's the best place for them. Just don't let your husband eat them. But one of the things I like to do is take a little bit of glue 
and put it over here on the side and stick them together and make these little cups. And you'll see that sometimes I, I put them together like this and they, they look um, like a little flower and it just makes it more interesting. We have a question about the uh, foam that you're using, the black floral okay, foam. Okay, so it's not, it's green, it's just wet. <laughs> um, it's a sphere, a four inch sphere. And you will have noticed in the beginning, I should have mentioned that to you. I taped it, you know, it's the belt and suspenders because if you're at a show, the last thing you want is your Oasis ball to run off. And these balls are, are very dense. And I will tell you that when I was in Houston doing this design many years ago, I was soaking the Oasis in my bathtub and went out to do something and the maid came in to clean up. And I'm sure the maids hate all those designers in the hotel rooms with their boxes and their mess. But I came back and my Oasis ball had a big handprint in it where she had picked it up to take it out of the bathtub to, um, to clean. And I was, you know, of course I came with two, but you never want to um, compress your oasis. A dead spot for water, it's compressed and there's no air inside. So it won't, um, won't be a, a place where you can, you know, have hydration. All right, I'm just turning around and I think I'm gonna leave it at this. I could keep adding, but I'm not going to. So questions. Modern uh, what mask, kind of glue do you use? What kind of glue? So for these little oasis, uh, for these little uh, Gaelic sleeves, I use oasis glue right here. And the key to oasis glue, don't lose the top. And when you, before you put the top on, dip it in a little Vaseline and have so the top doesn't stick to it. So you can get it, um, you can get it open. All right, I'm going to clean up and we're going to move on to the next design. All right, and then we have a question about the um, picture. So I'm going to share the picture one more time. So okay. that those who didn't see it before. So this is the picture that of the dress and the previous arrangement that you did to go with it. So I'm going to stick in a couple of these black love anthurium because I have them. I think I did use them the first time. I think they're very unusual, hard to find. And I, I'm on a search to get a plant so that I can grow them. But anthurium, fresh cut. Um, I have a refrigerator that's uh, dedicated uh, to beverages. And when I'm doing a, a, a program like this, they, they come out and, and, the, um, and the flowers go in. I turn the uh, refrigerator down to its lowest temperature, its, its warmest temperature. I wrap the plant material so the fan doesn't uh, bother them and um you know or make them too cold and i i'll keep them in there for a few days just to um, be sure you know it's very humid in florida and so it's very different than how i used to condition things in the north um, i was fortunate enough to have a wine cellar that was a perfect place to put dark and dank perfect for um all the the flowers um, so, okay, next, I'm going to get, so you're going to excuse me while I get the next design. Regarding conditioning, the most important thing that you have to remember is to do it. And also... No leaves should go underwater. I have to take this off the Lazy Susan. Years ago, I entered a show called 50 Shades of Green. And my class was called Keep Calm and Go Green. So for me, what I kept 
I'm using the staging just so that you can see it. Um, I kept thinking about, turn it this way, about a metronome, keep calm and go green. So I knew that I could always do just a, a little green mass arrangement, but I had it in my head that I wanted something with motion. And so I had these acrylic pieces from a workshop I had gone to in Orlando. And I, um, I started fiddling with them. But again, this was a situation where what I started with wasn't what I finished with. My initial design, I was doing a spiral like this with wire. And I was thinking, oh, um, uh, of hanging something in it. And for some reason, I got this acrylic out and I started having fun with it. So I'm going to trim off these spare pieces. So what I've used is bear grass. And I'm going to show you the little trick with bear grass and hypericum berries. And we just, well, I've only got three swings going through. We could do a fourth. But you see the, the motion going round and round. And so the way it works is you take a hypericum berry and you stick a wire through it. And if, if you can see where you put it, oops, sorry, um, you, stick your bear, you stick the bear grass through it and you just thread it on like this. It's really simple. I mean, you can put a whole bunch on if you want. It's a fun design. I've seen people um, use it like even in a modern mass and you have them tipped up like this. And um, so, and I just tucked them in. I drilled a hole here and you'll see that I used a pipe cleaner on the bottom. And I'll tell you why I did because I was a messy gluer um, and I made a mess and I needed to cover it up. So I um, put the pipe clean, green pipe cleaner there, thinking that it would add texture to the design. So these just came around. And miniatures are, um, you know, people think they're very easy to do because they're small. And anyone who's done one will tell you, yeah, that's not true. <laughs> um, miniatures are tricky. It's all about scale and proportion. And it's, it's hard to keep everything, um, you know, in proper, in proper scale and proportion and to work with it without making a mess. So one sign of a, of a good miniature is if one were to look at a photograph of it, they wouldn't be able to tell that it was indeed a miniature. So when I did this, several years ago, I showed it to a friend of mine who's a judge. And she said to me, wow, you've really gone abstract. And, you know, how, how big is that? And um, she didn't realize that it was a mini. So I was happy that I passed that test. <laughs> so I'm going to turn this around for you. And I'm going to clip off these little ends. You have some handouts from me that, you know, I talk about some of the characteristics. So if you have questions, you can ask now or you can always email me. So the key of, for a mini is that it can't be bigger than five inches. So these little squares that I have are five inches. And so you see, you use it to keep yourself honest to make sure that you haven't exceeded the five inches. Does that look okay? That's really very cool. Um, we do have some questions that have popped up um, that may be related more to the previous okay, uh, go ahead. arrangement. No, that's fine. Um, so is the decorative wood that you used in that uh, piece heavy? No. Actually, when I first did that design, the decorative piece that I used was um, heavy. It was, I actually used two pieces. And um, I used it again in a club in New York and 
thank you, Daniel. And um, they liked it so much that someone walked off with it. So I had to get a new a new piece. And so um, I ordered this online. I thank you, Daniel. I searched for driftwood. And I'm always searching because I did lose a really good piece that I actually had fabricated two pieces together to go up and down. So this piece is really, it's so light that I, I literally could um, use this tool and hit my skewer into the, into the driftwood. And I just put a little bit of hot glue on it to hold it in place. And I used two skewers to stick it in because I want to make sure, you know, belt and suspenders. I want to make, you know, if one comes loose, the other one still holds it. So any more questions? Uh, what temperature, I believe this is about the plant material. What temperature do you keep your plant material in? Well, in my home, it's just if I have the air conditioning on, um, you know, it's room temperature. If you, you're in the north, you have more flexibility. So in the winter, um, your basement might be um, a, a comfortable temperature for you to keep your, your plant material. Uh, tropicals, can I, I like to wrap the tropicals up and put them in the refrigerator. I'll keep a wet newspaper around the bottom, but again, it's a refrigerator set at the warmest temperature and there's nothing, there's no food in it to, um, you know, give off any gases that might, um, you know, not be helpful for the, um, the plant material. Um, I'm also, I keep thinking about conditioning. So i um, trying to think what other things, just remember with conditioning, clean off all the leaves and a fresh cut on an angle. If you have any um, uh, of the preservative to put in the water, go ahead and do it. If I'm using a glass container, just uh, arranging for home, I do not put the preservative in because it look, it, it doesn't keep the water pristine. How Any long do you need to leave flowers for proper conditioning? Um, six hours of, at a minimum. Usually, um, if you you know, I, in my house now, I have I also have a pantry that's dark. D um, dark is a good spot. So if your basement has a window, take the brown paper. The flowers may have come in and cover you know the tops with the brown paper so that you. Um, um, you know, there's not light on them. You just want to give them time to acclimate and adjust. Any more? Go so on. this is a funky design. Um, there are not too many flower shows are, are held in a motorcycle museum, but um, <laughs> this one was, um, and the show is called Pedal to the Metal. And there's the consortium of clubs out in, uh, the Milwaukee area does a major show every couple of years and um, every three years. And they, um, you know, have held it there. So they needed an extra entry. And so a friend and I, I said, I, I'm going to do it. You do it with me. It's always fun. People will ask me, do you exhibit alone or, or, or with a friend? And of course, many years ago when I was becoming a judge, I only exhibited alone. And for many, many years, I only exhibited alone. But it was sort of fun to work with somebody else because entering flower shows is a nerve wracking experience. And so it's nice to have someone to share that with, you know, as in that um, design, keep calm and go green. Well, you know, we can try, but we never when we enter a flower show, even the best of us. And um, we all get nervous. So it's nice to have a friend, and when you don't do so well, it's nice to have a friend to share the spoils with. So I, um, in this design, I had it in my head that I didn't want to be literal. The class was called Weekend Warrior. So the first thing you need to do when you're entering a show with a class, you know, the class title, if it's unfamiliar to you, is to, and even if it is familiar, sometimes it's good to look it up because Weekend Warrior is, is not a Hell's Angel. A Weekend Warrior is a professional who 
t- does their hobby on the weekend. So a professional, perhaps, who rides his motor or her motorcycle on the weekend. So my idea was to just do a, an abstract design with the suggestion of motorcycles. And so the suggestion here are these pipes. And that was fun to research um, in Jacksonville. Um, I, you know, would go to, I went to these metal fabricating places and um, they're like, well, what do you want? And I said, well, you know, it's not your usual thing. It's like when we go to Home Depot for stuff for flower shows, they'll ask you, what are you doing? And you say, I, I, I've come to now say, not what I'm supposed to be. <laughs> um, I'm not using it for what it's it's meant to. And they they sort of, I think, get that, oh, one of these crazy ladies, and they leave me alone. But um, yes, so I used in the bottom here, because I knew it was going to show, I used um, this sort of pinky red, red, orangey red coral oasis. I'll show you. This became popular oh, more, more than 10 years ago, and I still have it. I'm running out. I don't even know if you can get it anymore, but at least by being in these openings, it doesn't, I didn't have to cover it all the way. So. They want to know, is that a bird of paradise that you're using? No, these are called Sitacorum, and they're from Hawaii. And, um, you know, I do have birds of paradise in my yard, but they're, they're really much bigger than this. And so, as you can see, I was just thinking of, you know, when the motorcycle takes off and, you know, or does a, a quick peel out, you know, and you get a spark. So we're getting the flames coming out the end. <laughs> so that was my thought. So, you know, in, in entering, um, uh, flower shows don't overinterpret. you know look at look for you know just a little bit you you tend to get uh, carried away with yourself in in some of this but it's best to to just you know do a beautiful design so i've put um painted aspidistra leaves and you all know aspidistra i'm going to show you what it looks like so you all know aspidistra leaves, and these, you know, you, you hardly need to condition. I do. Um, I grow these in my, in my garden, and, um, but they last out of water. And up north, they'll dry much more quickly than they do here, and they look beautiful dried. You know, beautiful color for a fall arrangement. Well, I used the dried ones, and I painted them. And I've, uh, you know, affixed them with U, uh, U glue, and that's one of these things that you all probably should have in your toolbox. I'll show you what it looks like. U glue dashes, and I think even now you can get them on Amazon. They're just little tiny squares, and absolutely, uh, I used to say that Oasis glue was my favorite thing in my toolbox. Not anymore. U glue. Um, so what I've done is I've used zip ties on the ends of these tubes. I need to put one here. And I used it to hold this heliconia here. This one is attached by U-glue. And I can't get um, what I used in the, um, in the show. It's not in season. So I'm replacing with these ginger which are kind of fun. I'm going to use two of them so that I can get the height. So these ginger came in from Hawaii in a, in a box, and I pretty much kept them in the box for a day or two. And then I uh, wrapped them, put them in the fridge, and then... Um, put them in water in the garage. And we were a little chilly earlier in the week here, so it was perfect in the garage. What kind of paint do you use on the leaves? 
So it depends. This paint, uh, because I, I use spray paint, um, but I like to use something called Modern Masters, which you can get at art stores. And, um, and then I paint it right on, you know, with a brush. It's a little bit tedious, but I, um, it, it's a nice shiny color. Okay, so that's that. Questions? Uh, I've been asking them as we go. Let's see. Weekend Warrior. Does Weekend it warrior. say Weekend Warrior to you? I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to move this and use Daniel to help me carry the next one over because it's very heavy. Please. So this show was called um, The Color of Light. And my friend and I decided to enter and we chose the class called Ultraviolet. And we sat at lunch discussing, oh, what are we gonna do? Well, we knew that we could always do just a purple mass arrangement. So instead, who knows how we ever came up with this, we get um, you get talking with other, you know, with your friend and, you know, I'm in Florida, she's in Connecticut, you know, we're sending pictures, we're using con glass containers sideways, upside down. And because I'd had this contact with an acrylic uh, place that I found, which is how I did the miniature, I don't know, we started fiddling with acrylic. And somehow we ended up with this, we did a lot of research about um, ultraviolet light, much more than we needed to, I can assure you. <laughs> and, you know, ultraviolet light, you know, is really black light. It's not purple, but, you know, it had to be purple, right? If we showed up with some other design that wasn't purple in, a, in, in ultraviolet, we probably, you know, they wouldn't, the judges wouldn't have gotten it. So I have used here, again, these calathea leaves that are dried, and painted with modern masters. And I love these leaves because they just, I really wish you were here so you could feel them. They hold up better too when they're painted, but you know, dry, they have in person, they have great texture. And so I've used those and I've used bird of paradise leaves. These, the other ones are birds of paradise smoother. And I use modern master paint. Um, and got it all over myself. Um, that that goes without saying that you can't, um, you know, do um, well. I can't paint without getting it all over myself, and it's still kind of the joke about what happened to my sweater, how I got paint on the back of me. You know, still is a mystery, but I did. Um, but so we just built. We had these vertical lines going up and down, you know, sort of, and, and they're all a different height so that you get a, a movement. And then we have these glass bars that we glued across here. And um, I uh, affixed um, leaves, these dried leaves, which I did ahead of time for you all so you didn't have to wait for me fussing with them. And then for the show, we just, um, um, built across with um, shades of purple. And I glued, I took things like these orchids and glued them. And I'll do that for you here on to many of these places. We used callas, we used anthurium and we just filled it with the shades of purple. One thing about orchids, um, if you cut the backs off of them and you put a little drop of glue on the stem, it uh, seals in the moisture and so they, they stay hydrated and will stay alive. So one of the things for shows is to know what plant material can hold up out of water. 
And I think you often see people using anthurium and callas for that reason, because we can really get away with it uh, for the duration of a show. I mean, they're much happier with a little water. Back to conditioning, that reminds me, calla lilies. How many times have you bought callas and the stems are mushy? You know, when you're buying them, pay attention. And um, if anything is mushy, don't get them because um, they don't get any better. Once, once there's mush on them, um, smushy, that's, that's the end. The end. Uh, they're, they're old and they're not going to last. If they're fresh, the stems will be really turgid and you'll have no problem with them. But I had problem with um, the callas this time. And that's why um, I had to use um, plants. I used the, the callas from the um, plant from the grocery store. And so when I get callas, I tend to just do a fresh cut. I feel the stems and it, I, I make a decision about them. Am I going to um, put them in water or am I just going to refrigerate them? And so sometimes um, I don't put them in water at all. I'm gonna turn this around so you can see. And other times I just give them a quick little cut on the bottom and put them in just a teeny weeny bit of water because it, um, you know, too much water and they will, they, they could possibly get all mushy. So how do you dry the leaves that you are using in this arrangement? So the calathea leaves, you know, that I think is called a prayer plant and they have a, pur most of them have a purple back to them. They dry on their almost, I mean, they dry on the plant even. So, um, but I just, put them in a vase with no water and ignore them. Same thing with the aspidistra. Aspidistra will take a much longer time to dry. They're a much bigger leaf. The uh, bird of paradise also, I mean, they dry on the plant here. And so if you, um, if you buy them, um, just keep them out of water for a while and, um, and, you, and up north, you're not as humid. Well, D.C. is humid, I guess, but um, you you have a better luck. The 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 anthurium, I'm sorry, the aspidistra will take um, a while. They could take a month or two to dry. How about these tulip anthurium? Aren't they beautiful? So, I'm how far in advance can you paint the leaves before doing the arrangement? Well, the, those are permanent. So, if you paint your leaves. If dried leaves, if you paint dried leaves, you've got them forever, you know, until you destroy them. And so you can, um, you know, you can do that at any time. I keep a bag of these um, calathea leaves dried and I keep my, I kept my purple ones because I could always paint them a different color, I guess. So, um, but they're readily ab uh, available to me. That was one of the things I have in my garden. They're not hardy in where I live here, but they are hardy enough. And I have them close by the house. So if I'm getting a frost, I put a blanket on them. But some of them did turn brown, but that was okay because then I had some dried leaves to use. So the acrylic piece that this is, Based on um, this just came out of your imagination, how, how did you go about creating that? Um, I, as I said, I did it with a friend and um, we bought these tubes and I actually took a picture of her. You know, it's really great if you have um, tools. And so uh, all uh, serious floral designers have Dremels, um, but I don't have you know, other types of tools. And so her husband has a lot of tools. So whenever we're doing a, a serious show, I plan trips north and, you know, spend a couple of days at her lake house and we have fun. And so we had these and I have a picture of her with a, a plastic shield before COVID over her face, cutting 
these tubes. And so um, you learn new skills. Um, where, did, where were the tubes purchased? Were they from a... Um, we, uh, you know, you all probably have um, an acrylic place nearby. And so I found somebody online and um, I use them and they're, they're called tap plastics. And we've used them for a few shows. And, um, you know, and, and actually the, the, um, the miniature is made from their samples. So it's, so you have um, a piece that's going horizontally on that. Can you kind of point to it so that you I'm can coming back? Yeah, I'm just sticking something on here so that. Yeah. Okay. So I don't know. We got carried away with ourselves. So these are <laughs> acrylic. This is acrylic. I have a piece of um, um, purple duct tape across the bottom because this is so thick and beautiful. But it, you could see through it. And so you could even see these tubes being reflected in it. And so we didn't want it to be distracting. So we put the tape across here. So these are all here, sort of, you know, light waves maybe refracting. <laughs> and then we drilled these holes in, or she did, right here with me watching very carefully. And for some reason, we thought we should use glass rods as opposed to plexiglass. I don't know why. Um, I think we were trying to get um, another dimension of light and refraction. So we put we put the two glass in here. It was always my intention to use the leaves as the structure going across and then um, you know, just, um, you know, have a horizontal going on. A, 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 it's not really multi-rhythmic, but, but in many ways you, you might, we, you might think that it, it could and be. And how are the tubes attached at the base? They're glued with, um, um, an epoxy. And, you know, we set that up, uh, very carefully, um, and did a better job than I did. So we didn't have to use pipe cleaners to cover the, um, the glue mess and um, and we carried on. So I can keep going, but I think um, we have one more design and it's um, coming to the end. So, yeah. oh, I will tell you when we were doing this, you know, at the show, I was all, you know, you get all nerved up. And so my friend is ha handed me this stuff. And so at the very last minute, she dropped one of these orchids down this tube. And I thought it was really good because it, um, it, um, it just added another dimension coming up. But I will tell you that this show was three years ago and I only just took the, the dried orchid out of there last week <laughs> and it was hard to clean. <laughs> Is, can you do this yourself? Okay. All right. It's okay. So the last design, um, you just have to bear with me while I bring all the pieces over. don't often see, or you haven't in the past, seen a lot of glass being used in shows. And there's a reason for it. It really, um, you, you have to really wash it and make sure it's really, really clean and you don't have fingerprints. And you know, the glass is made in China and it's, you, it's not a perfect um, square. All right, so this show was in uh, Greenville, South Carolina, and it, it was called Water. Then the, the name of the, the name of the class was Water. The show was The Hills Are Alive. So uh, when I entered it, I thought, you know, they're looking for underwater. And I didn't really want to do an underwater. Kind of been there, done that on underwater. So I um, 
I was trying to think of different ways that I could do underwater or uh, suggest water without using water because it's it's a lot of work. Well, I I do use a lot of water in this design, but so I first tried. Well, so the class is called Water, and it referenced Reedy Falls. And Reedy Falls in um, downtown Greenville are the oldest natural waterfalls, or the only natural waterfall, urban waterfalls in the United States. And they're very proud of it. And when I looked at a picture of it, what I saw were these channels, these rectilinear channels. So that's how I went with these glass containers. So. Um, my first thought was to um, fill them with those gel beads and with water. And when I did that, I, it didn't, it, it almost read clear and it almost didn't, you almost didn't see it. So I guess this trick has been around for a long time, but I didn't know about it. And I just figured out, I guess I had some cellophane left from buying flowers and I for some reason stuck it in the container and I'm only going to I'll fill one just because otherwise it's kind of a waste of water but you'll see what happens so which one would be which is the most uh, um, visible this yeah, that one's yeah. okay so I filled the containers up with water around the cellophane And you can see it gave a really cool look. And if only that was enough, right? But I had to do a floral design on top of it. <laughs> it looks like ice almost in person. I was so happy to learn about this. Daniel, I may ask you to get me some more water. Almost to the top. Of course, thank you. When I did this, I um, brought in uh, distilled water because, of course, I wanted it to be very clean. And, you know, it's a flower show. We have to go crazy. So I did. Um, all right, so I had the design was going to have, you know, really good interest here. And so what did I want to do with it? So for me, I made a structure out of Mitsumata branches. I'm going to put them on here. And I put them together. You see my leaves again. I told you I use them a lot. I put them together with zip ties. So this is a Mitsumata branch painted with modern masters, um, the silvery green. So it has a really nice sheen. Thank you, Daniel. It has a really nice sheen. And I built it together, just wired them together and and attached with zip ties. And at some point I went through and I painted the zip ties as well so that they wouldn't be seen. Let me just finish filling this up. So with all of these containers filled with water, I could, I, I had them filled right up to the top. So anything that I was using that I thought might not survive, I made sure it's a little stem reach down to the, you know, get, could wick up some moisture. I'm going to leave it like that for today. So the structure, again, I use the leaves to sort of, um, and I'm going to do this from the back. So I, I put in, um, white callus and I bent them through. And if I was nervous that they weren't gonna hold, um, 
I attach them with glue or with you glue dashes. And so that we could have some movement. So some of you are probably thinking, oh my God, these designs, they're crazy. They're, you know, <laughs> I would never do that. But what I want you to think about with a flower show is that the biggest leap you have to make is that a flower show is not a, it's not generally about a design that you're going to put on your dining room table. It's a, it's a, it's about art and it's about um, um, in, interpretation. So you want to, you want to be thinking outside of the box. And when I lived in New York, I used to say, it's not about going to the Met, it's about going to the MoMA. So it's about the Modern Art Museum. It's, um, it, it's not your obvious um, flower arrangement. And that's not to say that I don't do those because I love that as much as the next person. Um, you know, I do flowers for my home. Um, and sometimes they're normal, but a lot of times I'm trying out something new. And um, I'll tell you this, that one thing I've realized, and since I can't see the front, uh, and you're not here to tell me, I'm just guessing from the back. It's looking good so far. Um, when I'm doing flowers at home, I often put them in a glass vase because I think that they last longer in a clear glass vase. I would never do that for a flower show because um, the stems become part of the design and they, they, it becomes a line that you, um, it's fighting for dominance with the rest of the container or rest of the design. So you need to, um, I guess we go over here with this. Um, you know, I, I, you would need to conceal the stems if you were going to use a glass container for a show. How's that look? Do we need more flowers on there? Okay, so, um, so that's water. And it's a different interpretation of water. So I have a question for you. All of these designs, except for one, were blue ribbons. Which one wasn't the blue ribbon? All right, so if you have an answer, <laughs> please put it in the chat. And tell us which one you think was not a blue ribbon. And I'll um, spotlight that video. Anyway, so that, that's my question for, for you all. And um, let's see if there's anything else that I could tell you. But think outside the box. Oh, I do want to say this. You know, when I referenced my husband saying, oh, you had it right the first time. Well, in truth, I practiced many, many times before a show. And so, I'll, you know, my first and then I finesse it and I'll try something else and then I'll try it again before the show. And I recommend that you practice, always practice. People ask, do you sketch? I do a little bit. I'm not a great artist. So my um, sketches are, are more similar to stick figures. And, but it gives me an idea. I'm the type of person that has to try it to see how it works. And so I put out the containers, I stuff them with cellophane, I build the Mitsumata, and maybe it's not right. And, and as it was with the miniature, I made the coils, I did this, and I just wasn't satisfied. So in the end, I tried something else. And so, and you should also photograph, and it's good to have a photograph because you can look at it um, and remind yourself what you did. But it's also good because when you look at a photograph, you'll see something different. 
in the old, old, old days, they used to say to the flower arrangers, take your compact and look at it over your shoulder. So today we have all have cameras so that we don't have to do that. But you definitely see something different in a photograph. Uh, we're seeing virtual shows now. And one of the problems with the virtual shows is that the depth is of, of a design is minimized by the photograph. It's flattened out. And so it's a it's a harder um, I mean, we're, we haven't yet learned to design for the camera. We're still designing for um, what we see. And so we have one. Um, one yes, vote. We have, well, we have a couple of guesses. We have Weekend Warrior, we have Miniature, and um, two, two guesses for Weekend Warrior. Well, Weekend Warrior it was. So maybe that was not a good design. <laughs> I happen to love it, but um, the judges felt that the green was uh, too dominant on the base. And um, my reaction to that was that in an abstract design, bold use of color is a characteristic. So um, I like to say, do what you like, like what you do. And another panel of judges could possibly produce a different result. Are there any more questions? Yes, um, we have a question. Where do you get your flowers from Hawaii? What is your source? Greenpoint. Greenpoint. And um, they really, it, it's been tough. The pandemic's been tough. Um, I think production is cut. And so they haven't had um, as much product. Um, certain product um, was just not available. And, uh, you know, disappointing. I have a source in California, but uh, I don't recommend it because it's so expensive. And so uh, best to work with your local wholesaler. I miss 28th Street in New York very much. I'm going to New York in a few weeks and I'm afraid to venture down there and see what has happened to it during this past year of the quarantine. So I hope that my favorite shops are still there. All right. Um, well, we have a lot of wows. Uh, love the um, the ice, uh, you know, look from the um, the faces that you just did. Um, and just to uh, see if any other more questions have popped in since I looked here. Um, no, I think we've gotten them all. Okay. I tried to ask them as we went. Well, um, yeah. Then in uh, conclusion, thank you so much for inviting me. And remember, your ribbons at home on the mantelpiece, and no one, and all your friends will see as they pass, and no one will ever know you were the only one in your class. So happy arranging, happy flower shows. Thank you. Oh, we do have one question. Um, you glue. Where do you get it? You can get it at your wholesaler, but I think Amazon sells it now. Great. Well, I hope all of you will join me in thanking Laura for a fantastic program. Let's give her a round of applause. Woohoo! Yay! Virtual applause. Um, and uh, let's see. I'm going to uh, stop with a couple of announcements. Here we go. And you're going to leave it on for them. Yes, one second. So, um, there we go. So uh, I wanted to give you guys a heads up about a couple of programs coming up. Um, and uh, these are programs that anybody can enjoy. So um, you know, one thing is, uh, if you're not a member of the Garden Club of Jacksonville, we have lots of people from Jacksonville who have joined us, please uh, consider becoming a member because uh, we have programs like this that are fa fabulous and uh, we want to share them with as many people as possible. Um, one program that I'd love for all of you to consider um, that will be available on Zoom on May 13th is our Designer of Distinction. Um, Laura was our Designer of Distinction last year, and that was an amazing program. I wish that we had recorded it um, because you would have been astounded by the works that she did that day. Uh, this year on May 13th, we'll have Ashley Woodson Bailey, who is a fabulous um, uh, floral ranger, but also photographs her pieces and turns them into works of art. And she'll show you that whole process during that program. So please check that out. Um, we have our budding gardeners program is uh, coming up this Saturday. And uh, if you haven't signed up your child, please do. That's March 13th. 
Uh, we have our Fun with Flowers program that's on March 23rd with uh, two women from an uh, organization called Soulful Stems, and they're going to be doing a DIY uh, program that uh, shows you how to make your own gift box that you can present at home or give as a gift. Uh, our Blooms Galore and more is coming up on April 9th with a preview party and April 10th is the big plant sale. Um, I highly recommend that you put this on your calendar and uh, plan to come. There'll be fabulous uh, plants for sale as well as a whole um, campus full of green themed vendors uh, that will be selling everything from honey to jewelry and everything in between. And our next horticulture program is April 13th with Nicholas Freeman, who will be talking about the native parks uh, one and two that are in the Riverside Avondale neighborhood here in Jacksonville. If you have um, ever been to an, uh, a, a program on the Garden Club, you know that we always do surveys. We need your feedback to help improve our programs. And uh, you'll be getting the survey link in your email and we're also putting it in the chat. If you want to go ahead and take it, we'd love to hear from you and uh, get your feedback and make sure that uh, you know you tell us what you think and help suggest programs for the future. Once again, I want to thank the Jesse Ball DuPont Fund for their support of programs like this. And I want to thank all of you out there for attending. And uh, I want to thank Laura and Daniel for being here to help make this program available to all of you. And I'm going to say goodbye.